What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of HTO Offseason, and today's episode is going to be all about the dreadful target panic. What's up, everybody? It's Zach Shermer here. Like I said in the intro, today's HTO off-season episode two is all about target panic. I want to say right off the bat that I am definitely not an expert archer by any means or a professional archer or Olympic archer, anything like that. Um, I've just been bow hunting since I was a kid, um, so I've shot a lot of arrows, but I never went through any formal type training or anything like that. I just simply want to share with you guys my experience from just almost like a um, just a regular type of bow hunter guy, um, my experience with target panic and, and the things that I did to help myself um, relieve some of that target panic. What is target panic? Target panic, or what I used to call buck fever, um, the best way I can describe it is almost like, it's almost like having that nervous twitch happen at the moment of a shot. And to paint kind of a picture for you, you know, whenever you go out on a hunt, you know, you have one thing in mind, right? It's, it's going out to, to, to take the best buck on your property because there's a pattern you've got on it, or it's going out to kill a turkey, whatever the case is. Um, you're going out for one particular goal. And whenever that goal starts walking right to you, say the big buck on your property, you start feeling nervous, you start feeling anxiety, you start feeling excitement, because the one thing that you're going after is is in your sights. And for me, whenever that happens, it's like I get this feeling of I need to get a shot down range, I'm here to kill this buck, I need to get a shot, when can I shoot, when can I shoot, I start rushing. And that that nervousness and that anxiety and that excitement, whenever those all those start turning up in my brain, it's whenever I get that nervous twitch at the moment of truth, which is right whenever you need to actually execute what you're there to do, which is put an arrow where you need to to have a clean and ethical kill. That's kind of how I describe target panic. I feel like target panic can manifest itself in many different forms. Maybe you twitch to the right, left, uh, low, whatever the case is. But for me, it is this right here. Whenever I pull the trigger, my left hand would lift up and I would be shooting high every time. That's how it manifested for me. And I know exactly when it happened. It was October 15th of 2016. On that day, I was hunting a brand new spot on our property and it was the first time I'd hunted it. It was the first cold snap of the season, October 15th. And the first mistake I made was going in there, not anticipating anything. Um, you know, whenever you go out, you need to anticipate that you're going to have a shot at the buck that you need to, that needs to be the mindset. And I didn't have that mindset. I went in there thinking, Oh, I'm probably not going to see anything. This is an area we never hunted. There's a reason why we never hunted it. I wasn't really expecting what was going to happen. And about nine 30 in the morning, a young buck and a doe come running through and about 45, 50 yards behind me, the one of the biggest bucks on our property steps up out of his bed because he hears the commotion and he kind of starts following them. So I grunt to him and sure enough, he hears me, looks at me and then starts walking to me on a beeline. And my heart is just pounding out of my chest at this point. And, you know, it's still, you know, even to this day, I still get excited and anxious about a deer. I mean, that's why we'd like to hunt. It's a huge adrenaline rush, but he starts coming, coming to me. There's one lane I've got where he's coming to, and it's between two trees. And I had yardage that like 20 times, and it's it was 25 yards. And sure enough, he's going right to that opening. So, you know, I'm getting my bow ready. I'm clipping on and draw back, and he's approaching that window. So I know I'm probably going to have to stop this deer. Whenever he reaches the front of the window, I try to stop him, and he doesn't stop. And that's whenever the nerves just... That's whenever that nervous twitch and all that stuff in my brain just start, ah, what's going to happen? So I just, I shot. I just forced it, even though he wasn't stopped. And I was six, seven inches high at 25 yards. Uh, kind of a real turning point for me because at that point, I'd actually never missed a nice buck before. It just felt terrible. Um, I, I, I felt like I wasn't competent enough to hunt and it was just a bad feeling as the season went on. I was actually successful on some does, um, didn't have another shot at a buck, but anyways, beginning of 2017, um, 
you know, and I was shooting at, I was shooting at the range then of 2016, trying to figure out what happened. And I had noticed that I had begun to shot, start shooting high, um, on all my shots. So, <clears throat> you know, I thought it was my bow moving the sights around. It's not my bow. It's not my sight. You know, it's gotta be me. So I decided to dive in and do a little bit of research, watching a bunch of YouTube videos and listening to podcasts. I figured out it's target panic. And the one podcast that really helped me out, if you guys are struggling with this, is um, a podcast a podcast called Knock On by a guy named John Dudley. He was a um, U.S. archery guy, Olympic guy. Um, he has a bow hunting show now. He has his own line of, of releases and arrows and all kinds of stuff. He's a Hoyt guy. Listening to all that stuff, I actually figured out what the heck target panic even was. It's the first time I'd ever heard the term, and I self-diagnosed myself. That's definitely what I have. So the two biggest things I took away from doing all that research um, that year <clears throat> was executing a surprise shot and patience. First executing a surprise shot. So I actually went to our local archery shop, and I picked this up. It's a stand shootout wait yeah stand shoot off tl and this is actually a thumb activated release so i bought that in early 2017 shot with it um, quite a bit that summer and going into the 2017 deer season um, i actually took a doe early season with this with this release um, but then i started to flip-flop i went back to this release then i'd go back to this one then i'd go to this one and then i'd go back to this one and just not really building any confidence in any any release so I was actually, I feel like I was doing more harm for myself um, than I was doing good. So by the end of the 2017 season, I decided to just stick with this release. You need to build confidence in the release that you're using. So the only way that you can do that is to shoot repetitively with this thing. So that's what I did. Like I was saying, the two things that I, fig- I, that I, that I took away from all the research and listening and all that stuff is the surprise shot and patience. The surprise shot actually seems counterintuitive because... You know, you want to have your dot on your sight on the target whenever you release. So you need to know whenever that whenever the t- that dot is on the target, you release. But because you know you're going to release, that's whenever those gears start turning in your brain and you develop those nervous habits of wanting that arrow to go, wanting it to go, and that's whenever you do your twitch. I'm basically just going to go through a, a shot sequence with you guys. <clears throat> whenever I'm drawing it back, I actually set my finger my thumb underneath the trigger. So whenever I'm drawing, I can apply pressure underneath that trigger. So it's really comfortable drawing. I'm not gonna activate the trigger by drawing that way. If you have your thumb out here, you can clip it on the way out. When I come to full draw, I have my anchor almost the same every time because I use my index finger and my middle finger. Whenever I grip that, it makes a V right there. I use that V to put on my jawline right there. And hold on, I'm just gonna grab my boat. So when I draw back, Thumb is under the under the release. I acquire my target, put the pin on the target, breathe for a second, put my thumb on the trigger, apply a little bit of pressure, and I start pulling. And whenever I mean pull, I mean it's almost like I'm pulling with my shoulder blades, like the insides of my shoulder blades. And boom, it start it fires. And I didn't put you know, I didn't click my thumb. I didn't anticipate it. Whenever you do it right, your elbow should kind of fly back a little bit because you're not exactly anticipating it. And it's not like it's a, it's a it's a complete like, oh my gosh, my bow just went off. You have a somewhat of an idea of when it's going to go off, but you don't know that exact moment. And that exact moment is where you can really start to mess up. Now, the second thing I learned, the second thing I took away, like I was saying, was patience. And this is probably honestly, almost, almost as important as that surprise shot, if not more, particularly for me, um, because part of my anxiety and anxiousness whenever I'm shooting at a deer or whatever is wanting to get that shot off. Like now, I need to get that arrow down range. I need to shoot that deer. I need to shoot that turkey, whatever the case is. So that's where patience really, really, really pays off. And this year, 2018, 2019 season, uh, I killed three deer uh, two does and one buck. And on all three of the shots, there are all three heart shots, all three using this release. The one thing that stands out out of all those bow kills is at the moment of the shot, I drew back and I had that feeling of, I need to shoot. I need to shoot. And I didn't, I took a second or two, took a deep breath. 
really settled into the shot and made it and executed with the shot. Now, if that one or two seconds of patience causes me to not get a shot at that deer, that's fine because within those one or two seconds that I could be rushing, I could be wounding that deer, I could be missing that deer. Um, so I'm okay with that. Shot execution, surprise shot execution, and patience. Those are the two biggest takeaways for me personally. Um, now let's go to the range. I'm going to shoot a few arrows down range. about the shot sequence in my office so I just wanted to take you out to the range and uh, shoot a few arrows down range just to kind of see what it looks like in a practical sense. On my particular release uh, you know yours might be different but like I was saying I keep my thumb underneath the trigger so whenever I draw back I can apply pressure on the trigger without activating the trigger and flinging arrows up into the trees. I've done it before especially right here. So thumb behind the trigger once you get drawn back take that deep breath acquire the target put the pin on the target be okay with the pin floating around the target. Focus on where you want to hit on the target. Put your thumb on the release, a little bit of pressure, and just pull through. So I'm gonna do a shot right here. And if you're doing it right, your elbow should kind of pop back because you're not, you're not tensed up and you're not hitting the trigger because you don't know exactly when it's gonna actually release and activate that that trigger and shoot the arrow down range so your elbow kind of should fly back a little bit and like I was saying in my office that V it sits right there every time so I have an anchor position almost identical every single shot another thing to think about that's really important um, whenever you are struggling with target panic and say you go with a new release like this or maybe a back tension release or a hinge type release don't worry about shooting bullseyes um, you know get 20 yards heck you know, you can even get 10 yards away from the, uh, from the target and just really practice pulling the bow back and concentrate on just the shot process. Pulling the shot through, having that surprise release and not punching the trigger. Once you get the shot sequence that, you, that you're more comfortable with and the surprise type shot down, then you can start worrying about um, getting it in the bullseye. So just keep that in mind. Uh, thanks for listening to this video. Hope you guys find it somewhat uh, helpful. Like I said, this is just my experience. I'm no expert archer or anything like that. I just wanted to share with you guys what I did to help myself out on uh, Target Panic.